Um, I'm Esther Wojcicki, and I teach journalism and English at Palo Alto High School. I'm also the chair of the board of Creative Commons, so I'm very interested in Creative Commons licenses and sharing on the web. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about my uh, journalism program and my English program at Palo Alto High School. So I have a program in, that involves about 400 kids taking journalism. It's an elective. And the program is divided into a newspaper, uh, three magazines, website, and television. And part of the reason that the program is really um, so popular with kids is because it involves a lot of um, self-learning. So kids are um, able to uh, use the, a lot of digital media. They work in groups on a regular basis. They come up with their own ideas for stories to write. Um, they are supervised for the most part by their own leaders. So for example, in the advanced journalism program, which is the newspaper, um, I have six editors in chief, and then there's section editors and page editors, and everybody is a writer, and they all work together in teams. And there's about 60 kids in that class, and I know it sounds like a lot of kids for one class, um, and most teachers would say so, but in fact, it works really well because all the kids work together, and um, they, they like being together. I actually tried to split them into two classes of 30, and then there was a lot of protest, parent protest and student protest, and so they, they like being together in this group, working as a group. So the question is, what does a classroom with 60 kids look like, and how do they get this done, all this stuff done? So there is a lot of talk and a lot of discussion, and they're not all sitting in rows wa uh, raising their hands. They're not all just waiting for me, the oracle on the stage, to speak. They are all participants. Everybody is a participant in the class. And um, we have computer labs. They work on their stuff in the computer lab. Um, all their articles are turned in on Google Docs. So the advantage of that is that it's all collaborative. Not only that, the other advantage is that they can share really easily and they can access it from any computer anywhere in the world. So they go from home to school and they can access the same document in exactly the same place that they left off at home. So it makes it really easy for them to work on projects at school and at home and work with their peers. And then also you can see, the editors like it, because you can see exactly when people worked on the document. So all those excuses of, I worked really hard and you know I just happened to lose it, that doesn't work anymore. Or the dog ate my paper, doesn't work anymore. Because um, you can, first of all, it's always there online, never gets lost. And, um, and then you can, uh, you can see exactly when the student worked on it. Also, here's another great thing for teachers, and that is it saves automatically. So I don't know if you remember the days. I remember the days well about the computer lab. All of a sudden, we'd have a power failure or something terrible would happen, and nobody had saved anything. It was on the desktop. And so they start up all over again. You'd lose it all. We never have that problem anymore. It's all there all the time. Even if the kid forgets to name it properly, you can always find it. So it makes a big difference. Um, so we have the two magazines. We have our, a sports magazine called Viking, and it works in the same principle as the newspaper called Campanile. And then we have another magazine called Verde, and it also works in the same principle, and that's a news magazine. Um, we have a website. It's, um, you can access it by going to voice.pally.net. And it's a compilation of all the writing of all the programs. In addition, we have the uh, literary magazine on there, Calliope. And we're working on the, um, the yearbook program, which hasn't been a part of the journalism program up until this point. But now we have a new teacher. And we're working on including them as well in the whole digital program. And she's working on um, including having a digital yearbook and so forth. Um, she's very revolutionary. And, uh, so, and then also we have one other program we're including, which is um, video production. So we're teaching kids how to make their own movies. And um, then hopefully we're going to be able to post those online. We're working on Creative Commons licensing. So we're part of a program. It's a pilot uh, funded by MacArthur Foundation. It's Journalism 2.0. 
and we're looking at the use of Creative Commons licenses on student work in the high schools. And um, we'll let you know about that. We don't know what, exactly where we're going with that, but if you're interested in being a part of that, you could just email me. And my email address is easy at the moment. It's esther at creativecommons.org. And um, we welcome any questions or any participation. And um, any In regard questions? to that, uh, any advice to teachers who are fired up about this but don't know where to begin? So the advice would be to go first to Creative Commons website, and then there is a something called Open Ed. And you go to the Open Ed project, and you'll see listed there all the... Um, all the programs, the education programs that Creative Commons is supporting. And um, also the other thing, if you want to go to the Pali website, Palo Alto High School website, um, the one I just gave you, voice.pali.net, you'll see um, all the articles there. And then also you can feel free to comment or to send an email to that um, website. Or as I said, you can send me an email and I'd be happy to... Um, to share it with everybody. So there's two other, three other teachers involved, Paul Kandel and Ellen Austin and uh, Mike McNulty. And then also we have the um, yearbook teacher, um, Miss Wixom, and then the uh, teacher that's doing the video production, Ron Williamson. And um, so we, all of them would be very happy to, to talk to anybody in the in the country who is interested in, in participating. So one of the great advantages of the program is that it's it's really participatory. The kids do the work. And um, so as a teacher of a class of 60, the question is like, God, how do you correct all those papers? Well, I don't. They all correct each other's stuff. And it works like a charm. Um, we have won the top of the nation. We won the gold and silver crowns from Columbia Scholastic Press. We won, uh, we're in the Hall of Fame, National Scholastic Press. Um, the Viking magazine, the one that is the sports magazine, it won the top three stories in the year from um, National Scholastic Press. So it shows that you can get really high quality work out of students and you, the teacher, don't have to correct every single thing. They can work as teams and correct each other's stuff. They learn more from each other than they're ever going to really learn from me. I actually provide the platform. I'm a facilitator. That's what I am. I'm an enabler. I enable them to succeed and do these wonderful projects that they do. So there's a good concrete definition of what Mimi Ito calls peer-based learning. That's instead of performing just for the teacher, they are assessing each other. Absolutely. Mimi Ito is absolutely right. So this learning, it's interesting, the learning um, doesn't just happen in the classroom. It continues after school. It continues all the time. So we also have a Facebook group. My students are all in a Facebook group. They interact on Facebook all the time. We have a Google group. They interact. They send messages on Google group. So we, we actually, I sent them a message this morning while I was in this conference because I wanted to make sure that they were all doing what they needed to do, and if they had any questions, all they had to do was email me. So they're all connected digitally with each other and with me and with the program. And, um, and also, they pay attention to what's going on in the world as a result. So they're always online. They read the New York Times online. They read all these uh, publications online because they're interested to see what's going on in the world and you know, what other ideas, what can I comment in? How can I be, you know, how can I make my voice heard as well? So um, it's a very, it's, it's an effective program. As you can see, there's 400 kids who, out of a school of about 1,800, have elected to take journalism. Um, as a, and that means the byproduct is learning how to write really well. So if you just had a program where um, you said to the kids, oh, you want to learn, you want to study for the SAT, and you want to learn all the writing skills, like punctuation and grammar and all that stuff, who do you think would sign up for that? But nobody. So, but they're signing up for this, and the byproduct is that they learn all these skills while they're doing it because they're they're interested you know all of a sudden all these skills become relevant and actually I have grammar books around the room and I don't ever have to say use them they're just used um, it works 